Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be comparing the Nissan 370Z with the Ford Mustang GT. Now both of these vehicles can be purchased uh, for a little over 30 grand or they can be optioned up to the mid 40s like this Nismo 370Z which I'm in currently uh, which sits over $46,000. Now we're going to be comparing six different areas between these two vehicles. The weight, the steering, uh, commerce, uh, the transmission, uh, commerce, and the sixth one, um, the sixth one, uh, yeah, I can't remember the sixth one, oops. Number one, starting off with weight. Now, both of these vehicles aren't particularly light, uh, but the Nissan does have a big advantage, about 300 to 400 pounds lighter, depending on the trim. So the base 370Z, it's about 3,300 pounds. This Nismo version, which I'm in, is about 3,400 pounds, whereas the Mustang is 3,700 pounds. And, you know, that is a significant difference where you are going to feel, you know, a little bit more agile in the Nissan Z. It's got a bit more dynamic uh, handling to it than the Mustang because of that weight loss. Now, the benefit of this weight loss is how it manifests itself in the steering for the 370Z. And so that's kind of the big one up of this, I think, over the Mustang is that the steering feels a lot sharper. In the Mustang, I was actually pretty surprised how good the GT Mustang felt. It does have pretty good steering. It's got nice weight to it. Uh, it builds um, you know it does have the different steering modes which is kind of tacky in sports cars because you know as a sports car you just want one setting uh, the best that gives you the most feedback you don't want artificial feedback or differing weights uh, where the Nissan it just kind of hones it in with one design there's no modes uh, and it gives you a really sharp response uh, one of the things I like the most about it is just how quickly you know when you turn in the vehicle reacts and I think a lot of that has to do with the upgraded suspension in this 370Z Nismo versus the regular one. I haven't driven a regular 370Z, but the steering in it is very sharp, very communicative, and you know it really lets you know what's going on with those tires, which I really enjoy about the 370Z. The Mustang isn't bad, you know, it's not a bad steering system. I was pretty impressed with it considering its weight, uh, but the Nissan has the one up there just in you know how the weight builds in a corner, how responsive it is when you turn in, and how much feedback you get from the steering in the Nissan versus the Mustang. Moving on to number three, the interior, and I think the Mustang comes out ahead here. It's got uh, what feels like a much more modern interior. It's got a lot of electronic gauges that give you all kinds of information, uh, but also importantly, it's got some practical aspects to it, uh, such as it has better visibility out the back. It's got better visibility looking to the sides, checking your blind spot, uh, and it also has telescoping in the steering wheel, which you don't have in the 370Z. So both of them, they have great seats, uh, Recaro's fantastic seats to sit in, uh, comfortable, well bolstered, um, but in the 370Z it's a bit dated in here uh, in comparison, and you know it would be really nice to pull the steering wheel out a little bit for taller folks who have to have the seat far back uh, because of their long legs. Uh, so that's just one gripe, and also you know the visibility in the interior of the 370 isn't quite as good. Another kind of unfortunate thing is that you have, this is the top of the line 370Z, this is the most expensive one. You you can buy uh, and you've got these three blanks here behind the gear shift uh, for buttons you know which are functions in other vehicles it may be the convertible top heated seats things like that but it's unfortunate you know that you're in the most expensive model uh, and then you're looking at blanks while you're driving so that's kind of unfortunate not a huge deal it would be kind of cool if they just had like maybe a place to hold your phone or something instead uh, to put there rather than the button blanks uh, but not a huge gripe Overall, I do like the interior of both cars. Uh, I really wish, though, that you could telescope the steering in the 370Z. Number four, the transmissions. So the transmissions in both vehicles are pretty notchy. Uh, the biggest difference I notice is that the Mustang has an extremely smooth clutch. The clutch engagement in the Mustang, pretty much anybody can get in that car uh, and you can shift gears and accelerate from a stop without any jerkiness at all. It's brilliantly smooth. That's a super smooth vehicle. Now the 370Z on the other hand, uh, it's not quite there as far as the clutch. The transmission's great. Uh, the clutch engagement is isn't that smooth in comparison, but it can make up for it because it has uh, automatic downshift rev matching. So with the 370Z, uh, you can just let the computer do all of the rev matching for you. And so when you do that, the clutch engagement is very smooth, obviously, because the engine and transmission are matched perfectly. So if I want to downshift to third gear, 
you know, done. It's super smooth. You don't really feel that. It's amazing uh, how well it does. If I want to downshift into second gear, it blips it up. Super smooth engagement. And that's a really fun feature, uh, and it makes the shifting gears really smooth. So it can do it using that feature, or if you're a good enough driver, obviously. Uh, but that said, the clutch is a little bit less smooth to engage versus the Mustang. Still fairly smooth, but it's not quite as smooth as the Mustang. As far as gearing, the Mustang and the 370Z actually both have really aggressive gearing. In fact, gears one through five in both cars are very similar. The difference is in the sixth gear. So the Mustang chooses to have a pretty high overdrive gear, so you drop the revs quite a bit and you can get decent fuel economy. Uh, the 370Z keeps sixth gear aggressive, so it's just all out every gear you're in. I like the method that the Mustang does uh, because, you know, how often do you need to be in sixth gear and flat out? Like you're going so fast at that point. Uh, so it is nice to have it for fuel economy. I think that's a clever solution. That said, this does still get slightly better fuel economy than the Mustang. It's got a smaller engine, it weighs less, uh, and it does do slightly better. Uh, not a huge difference, but a little bit better fuel economy, even though that Mustang does have clever gearing. So overall, which transmission's better? Um, it's hard to say. I really love the rev matching in the Nissan 370Z, uh, but on the other hand, I love the clutch in the Ford Mustang GT. So both of them, fantastic transmissions, and I really do like the gearing in both transmissions. So that brings us to number five, the engine. Uh, and so the Nissan here, a V6 revving up to 7,500 RPM, uh, and you've got 350 horsepower in the Nismo spec version. Uh, if you are in the Mustang GT, you've got a five liter V8 naturally aspirated, and that's gonna be giving you 435 horsepower, uh, revs up to 7,000 RPM. So the Mustang, of course, far more torquey, uh, doesn't rev quite as high, revs to 7,000 versus 7,500. Uh, and the Nissan definitely takes advantage of gearing in order to compensate for the lack of torque versus, you know, a much larger engine. So it doesn't feel like it doesn't have torque. Uh, it does a great job of putting down power. You know, if you drop it into third, it pulls pretty hard. If you were to drop it in second, it pulls even harder. So it's a good transmission uh, in order to compensate for the lack of torque. Both engines, pretty powerful. I think overall, the, uh, you know, decision to compromise on power with a V6 engine versus a V8 engine is worth it in the 370Z uh, because you can pull some weight out. And so even though it has less power, you know, it is a really fun car to drive. Uh, and, you know, I don't think it's lacking at all in that department. This car is seriously quick. Uh, so both engines great as well. Both engines and both transmissions I really do like uh, in both of these vehicles. Now the final category and probably the most important uh, comparing these two cars, which car is more fun? fun to drive. And I have to say, I think it's the 370Z, and there's a lot of reasons for that. First of all, the steering in this vehicle is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you know, you get all the feedback you want, you get, you know, a great response and turn in. Phenomenal steering in the 370Z, which leads to a car which is more fun to drive. That's the same case with the uh, Subaru BRZ. You know, the steering in that car is so good that it makes the car really fun to drive, even though it doesn't have a lot of power. This actually does have power. It's got really aggressive gearing, which I like, uh, and it makes it super fun to drive. You know, drop it down in the third, drop it down in the second, give it a gas, and this thing just hauls. It's super fun. Uh, it's unbelievable, you know, the, the amount of power this thing puts down because, you know, 350 horsepower, 3,400 pounds, it doesn't necessarily sound that fast, but this thing feels super fast. One of the other differences that I noticed between the 370Z and the Mustang is just how much more raw of an experience the 370Z is. It's really not afraid to sacrifice comfort in the name of performance, and I really like vehicles that do that. Um, you know, the Mustang, it's great, it can perform well, and it's also super comfortable, and it makes some sacrifices in order to be comfortable. The 370Z, it really doesn't. You know, this is a driver's car uh, through and through. It's loud on the interior. It can be bumpy at times, harsh at times. The shifting isn't all that smooth. Uh, but, you know, when you're going for it, when you're driving in a canyon road, uh, this thing communicates so well with you. It's got so much power to put down, and it's just such a blast uh, to run through the gears. And I also really love that downshift rev matching. It's a great feature, uh, and this car just overall is a ton of fun. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Now I do have full reviews of both the 370Z and the Mustang GT, so if you're curious about those, feel free to check out the links.